Welcome to my great grandmother's 117th birthday. Right now she's taking pictures of people who have come to see her and celebrate this big day with her. There's more than 90 years difference between me and her. She's 117 and I'm just 23. I'm Priscilla Nyade and I'm returning to my ancestral home in Kenya to celebrate a remarkable birthday of one of the oldest people in the world. My great-grandmother, Elizabeth Koinange. I'm here to discover the secrets of her long life as she throws a party and reunites five generations of my family. This is Kiambu, where I was born. It's about 10 miles from Nairobi, the capital of Kenya. This fertile land has been home to the Kikuyu tribe and to my family, the Kwenangas, for at least six generations. Today, there are hundreds of Kwenangas, like me, spread around the world. I'm returning from my home in London to visit a woman very close to my heart, who has never left Kenya, but has cultivated a global family. We're just heading up to my great grandma's house. The road is quite bumpy, because it's like a makeshift road. This is a shrine where uh, most of my family are buried. My great granddad, my granddad, um, his children and his five wives. My great-grandma is the fifth wife out of six. We're heading up to my great-grandma's home. She lives right by the side of where my great-granddad used to live. And I'm really excited to see her. Here she is. <laughs> This is my great-grandmother, Elizabeth Gavoni Koinange. She's going to be 117. This is my great-aunt, Irene, and she's here to help me with the translation because I can understand everything my great-grandmother tells me, but to speak Kikuyu is really difficult. Great-grandma Elizabeth has lived on this land for 90 years. She grew up tending cattle on her father's farm then moved here as a young bride and raised seven children. She built this house with profits from the farm. My great-grandmother is proud of her government identity card. It doesn't show the exact month or day that she was born, but does have her year of birth as 1900. The Kikuyu tribal tradition of age groups gives the same name to all children born in the same year. My great-grandmother belongs to the Kihio Imwere age group, which means we know she was born sometime between 1899 and 1900. <laughs> Do you remember when you when you got married? No, you didn't tell me I can't remember going in it. I no don't do. And they are much to take a guy who can don't want to go to the car. I can't even tell you. My husband, my wife, I did to my car. I'm not a kid. And how do you remember your wedding day? 
ninge lilikana no jugire uri anda nda giukire ninge kerio kanitha ini na ngi ko ya todu da hikire kure atumia ingi rau nie guku ona di nitakure ho na na hinya ni undu ni muthuri na di na di mwana munyinyi rau ngakire ho na hinya ni ugo e Great grandmother Elizabeth was the fifth of six wives of senior chief Quenange. He worked with the British during colonial rule and is well known in Kenya for playing a part in the country's independence. So was it difficult for you to be the fifth wife? E monoro do da kire mwana na dingi endire gukika kundu kwina tumia ta cha ngiugu. No edyo tutiona katare uru. Tondo re me modo aguru kuri atumia kwe mu kuri atumia ngi ni megutaithagia mawira. Leonard Quinange is Elizabeth's sixth child and he's my great uncle. He lives next door to my great grandmother and was a child during the 1950s when his father, Senior Chief Quinange, was detained during the Mau Mau uprising. The Mau Mau uprising was a revolt against European ownership of land. Mau Mau suspects were being checked prior to interrogation. All were members of the Kukuyu, the tribe which has suffered most from the Mau Mau. A state of emergency was declared in Kenya. And although it eventually led to the end of British rule, it was a tough time for my great-grandparents and for my uncle Leonard. In 1952, my father was taken into detention. Kenya had been declared emergency and he was detained. For the next seven years, he was in detention. We used to be children of a chief. We became beggars. We were being helped by those people we would have called poor. Mm. During now the, the, the Mau Mau, it was not only affecting our family, it affected other families. One of my, my auntie, who had, uh, I think there were, there were nine children, my mother took, took them. And already she had taken two other children who belonged to her sister who had died, my mother's sister. So we were, my mother was raising about 20 children. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so we had a lot of... Uh, it was it was chaotic, you know, <laughs> like we are fighting for food. This shrine is the resting place of my great grandfather. He lies alongside his five wives, and there's a space reserved for my great grandmother Elizabeth. As theirs was a polygamous marriage, visiting the shrine puts into perspective how large the chief's family really was. My great-grandfather is resting here, but his legacy is living on in hundreds of descendants. What do you think about polygamy today? Would you advise me to go down that route? You can get take it up. <laughs> <laughs> she would, you wouldn't like me to. Don't do that. No, you did it, you did it. No, Koroko Hoteka. And do my guane to do. Tai duer ne to ai guane te muno. To aruga ganyo geu mu ena tu le tu le atanda tu. 
tukaruga cia ciana ikarira kou na ithi tukarira kumwe hamwe na muthuri wito oguo riguo twekaga ni twanyitanite muno 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 yeah you were the last one to to practice polygamy does that mean that our family will now be smaller and smaller and how do you feel I feel about that Deutiganeo ma maraiga mati go ciara ciana nyingi ri. E mundu akoiga ngwende ri. Ngwendo mwe. Oguo. Oguo ni kuhitia kunene muno ni kunina ruriri. Ithwe twa ciara ga ciana nyingi tare unye nda ciarete mugwa. Na na kone aikarire atari munyite hende ya mbara ri. Ringi athire ona mbere na gucia. Na re re. Ake age thiere ngegeikara oguo rondo nie ndari na Jesu ndingi acerire muthuri ndingi acerire kacharie muthuri ungi wa kuhe mwana ngeikara oguo So you wouldn't want me to just have one or two kids you want me to have five six Eh ndio na tutanda tudogi Regardless of how many children I may have in the future there's no doubt that the family is growing. My great-grandmother gave birth to seven children, and there are tens of grandchildren. My father was one of them, and I'm his second child of three, making me one of many, many great-grandchildren to Elizabeth. <laughs> Andri kana gya ora twenda ine. Eu gamuliri kana. Um who who's in those pictures? That one. Tumi a chiori. Ni ari ato ato ado magana o gedo mo kia marua. Gedo mo geta re kia marua gedo mo ya kanida. Ni akavete. Nagotire we ho no ni ndigarite. And is that you? <laughs> <laughs> so pretty. Mm. 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 Oh, don't let the money to all the way or the daddy, never think your daddy in your tongue in gone de moral. They went there and don't I go out and go to Kuari, Kuga, Siana, and do it on this Yana Siakuan. Sure, they lay all to the Kehoya when I diage Kuire, nor a more do I go a Kerongi work. <laughs> I can see that photographs play a big part in my great-grandmother's life. To celebrate her birthday, she's throwing a party. And we're going to attempt something very special. A family photograph, a living family tree, with five generations of my family and my great-grandmother at the center. But with so many people involved, it could take a while. The 1st of January is a big day for my great-grandmother, Elizabeth Quenange. She's invited family and friends to celebrate her 117th birthday. We've traveled from far and wide, and for me, it's a chance to reunite with my Kenyan family. So the family, your children, your children's children, we're all spread out across the world, like me, I'm in London. Do you like that we're all over the world now? Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, 
So have you always celebrated on the 1st of January since you can remember? Right now everyone's preparing the food. It's gonna be loads of meat, loads of vegetables. So now I think it's time for me to get changed as all the guests are slowly arriving. So I'm gonna wear something that's a bit more comfortable. By throwing this party, my great-grandmother is continuing the tradition started by her late husband of gathering friends and family together on the first day of the year. So right now, the party's in full swing. Most people have eaten. There's still some people getting served over here. Um, we still have some late arrivals coming in, as you can expect. We have my great uncle right now giving a speech and saying once everyone's eaten, all the family get together and take a group picture of our family tree. Next, it's time for the guest of honor to take the microphone. Time for cake, and one of Elizabeth's granddaughters does the honours. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Great grandma puts her longevity down to a diet of boiled jam and milky tea. But for today, she's happy to indulge. Um, everyone has just been given some cake. Um, the first people to be given some cake was everyone named after my great granddad. So what my auntie said was, all the Kanangas come and give your um, grandmother, your great grandmother, your great 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 grandmother some cake. And she's really happy. I think she's had a lot of cake. <laughs> Hopefully when I'm old and a hundred years old, I'll be fed cake by all, all the people who come after me. So yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And I'm quite jealous, to be honest. <laughs> so we're just gonna wait. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy it. <laughs> this cake is good. <laughs> so we're just gonna wait for my great grandmother to go to where we're all taking a family picture. Once she's sat down, we'll all start moving towards that area. Organising so many people is a tough task. Everybody's keen to catch up. 
and while great-grandmother patiently waits. It's a chance to meet relatives I didn't know I had. Do you know how we're related? <laughs> so I belong to the grandmother older than her. This is my cousin. Cousin? So he's, his son is your dad? Yeah. Hi. 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 Thank you very much. I'm your aunt. Yeah? I'm your aunt. <laughs> People are so excited to see each other that they're socialising and they're slowly, slowly, slowly moving towards this way. So hopefully we get the picture by the end of the day. First to join our living family tree, great-grandmother Elizabeth, surrounded by her six surviving children who have a combined age of more than 400. Next to join my aunts and uncles. So now the third generation has been called, so that means the people who call my great grandmother, great grandmother. So I'm part of them, so I'm going to join them. So my mother has been holding this party for about 20 years. She enjoys it, she would like to do it every quarter of a year. She's happy to see her family coming together. She has become like the pillar for the family unit. Many of us enjoy tracing our family tree. But for most families, gathering so many generations together like this isn't possible. It's no surprise that people have traveled from far and wide because great-grandmother Elizabeth's enthusiasm for life is infectious. <laughs> I finally got my selfie! <laughs> Hers is a life well lived. A life focused on providing her descendants with advantages that she didn't get to enjoy. Faith, love and food are the fundamentals of my great-grandmother's life. And although she rarely leaves her small house, the world comes to her through her children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren like me. One of the things which I like about her and I think is this is God-given is her memory because she's, she doesn't get old. If you come here and you give us, you talk to, you say hello to her and you talk to her, next time you come, she will remember you very well. She can't forget. Bye. Improvements in medicine mean we can all expect a longer life. But it's how you live it that really matters. And for this, my great-grandmother Elizabeth is my inspiration.